Hello everyone and thank you for watching this video. Today we are going to talk about the reparameterization trick. We'll start by talking about what it is and why we need it and then we'll continue to talk about the well mathematical or maybe statistical aspect of that uh, trick and I will also try to cover some of the basic definitions that are needed in order to understand that part of the trick. Okay. Let's start with the what and why. And in order to really understand what the trick is, we need to cover two different neural network architectures. The first one is an encoder decoder architecture. And what this model does is it receives some sample, say an image as an input. And then the encoder part of the architecture compresses that image into some lower dimensional space, a latent space, usually denoted as Z. And then the decoder reconstructs it back to the original form such that the reconstructed image will be as close as possible to the original image. And from this architecture, we can talk about the variational autoencoder. This is a slightly different uh, neural network which does not reconstruct the sample, but rather it generates new samples. It receives, again, a sample that can be, say, an image as input. The encoder then compresses it to a latent space. And then what the decoder does is that it generates a new sample that should be similar to the original sample. And the key difference is that when we reach this part of the neural network, um, we actually sample Z as though it's part of some Gaussian distribution. And so we sample, um, again, some uh, variable from that uh, uh, distribution, and then we feed it to the decoder, which again, generates a new unseen uh, um, sample, which should resemble the original input. And this actually poses a problem for us, because if you want to train our network, then we need to generate a sample and then using backpropagation and gradient descent, we need to uh, differentiate back in order to tune the parameters of the decoder and the encoder. And this sampling process, also known as a random process or a stochastic process, uh, does, does not help us uh, get the derivative of that uh, loss function. So the statement again of the problem is, that backpropagation, again, will not give us the required derivative when we have this random node inside our network. And the solution is, of course, the reparameterization trick. Okay, so in order to understand the trick a little better, let's talk about some of the basic definitions that revolve around Gaussian distribution. First of all, uh, the distribution itself is usually den denoted with this uh, stylish uh, N. And there are two parameters for the distribution. One is mu, which is the mean or the average maybe, and sigma, which is the standard deviation. And uh, this part of the denotation is that Z is sampled from this distribution. So to get a grasp of what what uh, these two parameters do, we can try to plot a few uh, uh, examples. So over here, what we did is we plotted three uh, Gaussian distribution where the mu is, uh, the, the, the average is, is still, is always equal to zero. But we did play around with the sigma and it could, we can see that it could, it could get wider or thinner depending on the sigma. And we can also do the same for the mean value. We can change the mean and the sigma is stale. And we can see that what it does is that it changes the location of the peak of the distribution. And the reparameterization trick relies on the fact that we can take some uh, very basic uh, normal distribution. And if we want to simulate as though we are sampling from another Gaussian distribution, then that's fairly easy. All we have to do is, well, we have to sample, um, again, uh, uh, some uh, variable from, from this distribution. And then in order to simulate one of the Gaussian distribution, all we have to do is move it 
right or left according to the mean and to either make the distribution wider or thinner according to the sigma. So we have to add the mu and multiply the variable by sigma and then we are simulating as though we, are, we have taken it from this distribution. And so a bit more formally, it looks like this. If we want to sample z from some normal distribution, then we can actually define a function g, which is parameterized by these two, uh, mu and sigma. We take from some known normal distribution where the mu is zero and the sigma is one, some variable, say, um, um, epsilon, and we feed it to that function. And what that function does is, again, it adds the mu and multiplies by sigma. And that is equal to z. That is, that is as, as though we have sample z from this distribution. And we'll see that this actually helps us. Okay, now we understand what the trick is, but I guess it's still not clear or not necessarily clear how this helps us with the backpropagation problem that I've shown earlier. So to understand the backpropagation, let's Let's try to see a few um, flowcharts or maybe an up view of some neural networks. For these flowcharts, let's denote a random or a stochastic node with a blue color and a deterministic uh, node with this uh, red, I guess maybe brown, orangish color. So the normal, the, the original form which again poses a problem as when we want to back propagate and we have this uh, Z uh, that we sample. And as we've said before, this is problematic because we cannot get the estimate of the derivative. So what we do is we reparameterize it. We take the, um, the randomness outside of this node and make it deterministic with the function g that we've seen before. It looks like this. In order to really backpropagate, what we do is, well, <clears throat> we define again z as uh, a function of g and epsilon. And again, epsilon is taken from that normal, known normal distribution. And when we backpropagate, the back propagation flows only through well the, 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 the places where we really want to learn the derivative. And so we've taken the randomness outside of the um, Z node, which enables us to differentiate. And there is, we still simulate as though we are sampling from the distribution where we really want to sample from. That is the trick. That is what we do in order to be able to generate, to to train our VAE model. All right, before we deep dive into the mathematical and statistical aspect of, the, of this trick, I will ask that if this video has been helpful for you in any way, please like and subscribe. And okay, moving forward, we'll talk about the math part, but I will want to go back to some of the slides from the what and why section to kind of talk about them just a little more. First of all, regarding the VAE architecture, yes, we do sample from the Gaussian distribution, but it is, it is also important to know that this uh, sampling process is being done after we receive some sample, say we denote that sample as X, into our model. And that means that sampling Z is actually conditioned by our X. And moving back to this flowchart over here, that means that Z should also be, um, well, G should also be a function of us, both uh, epsilon and X together. And that these two parameters, mu and sigma, should also be related to that input X, meaning that this should really look like this. So what we've changed is, again, G also gets X as input because sampling Z depends on it. And we've changed mu and sigma to be also related to x. And because this is getting very crowded, then we can denote both mu and sigma over here and over here with another um, parameter. It's sometimes denoted with theta and sometimes denoted with phi. 
Over here we use phi, but you'll see in the next slides we'll use another example where we denote it with theta. So ju this just uh, looks a bit cleaner. And again, what we've added is that Z is sampled, conditioned by epsilon, which is the noise, and X, which is the input to the model. Okay, let's talk about uh, the definitions. Uh, the first term is the expectation. And I guess the most intuitive way to think of the expectation is to think of it as though it's some form of average. And usually when we see a loss function for some neural network, it's wrapped around this expectation terms. And what that means is that if we want to, say, minimize that loss function, then we want to minimize the average value of that function across all data points. And I assume most of you know that uh, probability density functions are denoted with P and sometimes Q. And the reason I wanted to cover this definition is because we often see both the expectation and the probability show up together, like in this equation over here. And what we see over here is the expectation of some function, which could be a loss function, that uh, receives X as input, where X is taken from some distribution P. And in the same equation, we can also see that, well, if x is continuous, then we can replace the expectation sign with this integral sign over here. Another definition that we want to cover is the gradient. Okay, when we uh, differentiate a function, we see this operator. And the reason I wanted to cover this definition is because of Leibniz integral rule which uh, the rule itself is, well, outside of the scope of this video, but we will use it, and it's important to understand that it exists. And essentially what it states is that if we differentiate a function, which is inside an integral, then in some cases, if that function uh, follows some criterions, then we can move that gradient operator inside the integral sign. We'll see the use of that later. Okay. Let's talk about minimizing, say, a loss function, where we have an input value, this time z, taken from some distribution. I call this case the normal case, the case where we can minimize the loss function using backpropagation and gradient descent. In order to minimize it, we need to compute the derivative of the expectation. So that is the sign over here. And of course, the, deriv the derivative is with, with respect to theta where theta is the model's parameters. And the first thing we do is we replace the expectation sign with the integral sign because z is continuous. The next thing we do is we insert the uh, gradient operator inside of the integral sign because of Leibniz integral rule. And note that the this operator is now inside and I've taken the p of z and uh, the integral sign outside because now what I can do is convert it back to the expectation form. And well, I guess that's, ex that's it. I mean, if we want to minimize the loss function and we want to compute the gradient of the expectation, then what we've shown is that all we need to do is to differentiate the function itself. And this is possible in the normal case where uh, we sample from some distribution where we know the parameters. But if the parameters are not known, then this poses a problem. Let's see that again in a mathematical point of view. So for our problematic case, we now have a distribution where the parameters also denoted with theta because they are also uh, parameters that we want to learn. And these, these parameters are unknown. So again, if you want to minimize that loss function, we'll try to follow the same steps using the gradient operator outside of the expectation. First, we replace the expectation with the integral sign and then move the uh, gradient operator inside because of Leibniz integral rule. Uh, this, this part is slightly different because now we have the gradient operator of two different functions. And there's a rule for that. It's usually taught in high school that states that 
this is equal to the derivative of the first function times the second function plus the derivative of the second function times the first function. And well, the second term, that, that, is, that term is okay for us because we can differentiate the function and we can sample from this unknown distribution. We just don't have the parameters, but still we can sample from that distribution. This term, however, is not necessarily, cannot be uh, formed as an expectation. And we cannot uh, uh, calculate the derivative of, well, p of theta of z. This poses the problem for us. And this is where the reparameterization tricks come in, comes in and what helps us out. So just as a reminder, the, reparam the reparameterization trick, uh, well, what we do is we take some function g, and this time it's denoted with t for the parameters of the distribution. And we simulate with this function as though we have sample z from the distribution where the parameters are theta. And epsilon is taken from some known distribution, n with mean 0 and standard deviation 1. And what we can do is replace the z value in our expectation term with g of epsilon and x like we did over here. And note that when we do that, our distribution where we sample from is, well, p of epsilon. And again, this distribution is known. And this helps us calculate the derivative. Okay, if, again, we want to calculate the derivative of this expectation term, then like we did over here, we can replace the z with uh, the function g. And now, like we did in the previous slide, I'm, I'm skipping a few steps over here because it's the same. We can move the gradient operator inside. And that's actually it. Now we can differentiate these two functions and calculate the derivative and train our model. And this is what we do uh, in variational autoencoders. We use the reparameterization trick in order to be able to compute the gradient and train the model. Thank you so much for watching this video. Again, if it was helpful, please like and subscribe.